I'm rather proud that uh, Maurice Sanchi refers to me as the mother of change for life, which I hope most of you have heard of as a campaign that we started um, two or three years ago to really try and change the health of the nation, bringing business uh, and government together in partnership. Uh, in 2007, I was very conscious that bans and restrictions did not appear to be working. Uh, we were doing a lot in the ad industry um, to do with food advertising, um, uh, questions about alcohol, advertising bans, um, obviously already uh, bans in place with regard to smoking and so on. Um, and I was very quickly, when I started this job, um, rather um, amazed and depressed by the way the government was then, uh, and possibly still is, I hope not, engaging with um, industry in terms of trying to get the best out of business to do the right thing. Um, and I was amazed how Whitehall departments would be constantly demanding more research, more evidence from the ad industry. And having been a shadow minister for eight years, working across a number of different departments, I knew that most of that evidence, in fact, would just gather dust tick a few fairly useless boxes and actually achieve precious little. That much of what was going on was about process and not much focus on outcomes. Why? Because depressingly, outcomes were too risky. They could disrupt the status quo, um, and that's something you don't do if you're trying to keep Whitehall happy. Uh, meanwhile, people seem to be eating more and drinking more, so there were threats of more regulations that we genuinely believe would not work. I mean, the classic example, looking back, is a ban on smoking. Now, I'm not saying I'm, I'm against that at all, but just the knock-on effect is quite interesting. Um, all it actually has done is give the companies, the, smoke, um, the, the cigarette companies, a massive boost to their profits, as they have now no need for a marketing budget. They have no competition, as no new players can enter the market because they don't have to promote what they're trying to sell. Um, so, of course, now they can promote their wares across the world in a way that I think some of us find uh, pretty tough to take. Um, so we don't want to have the same, and we didn't want to have the same with the food industry uh, and also with alcohol. My main focus here is going to be on food, and I'll explain why. Food, let's be honest, ad restrictions were not leading to thinner, fitter people. On the contrary, it's clear that this is something uh, may I day say, day say it's a bigger, it's a, it's a cultural issue, and it therefore requires a major shift in people's thinking and behaviour. And those people include the clinicians, the politicians, as well as individuals, uh, consumers and citizens. So I decided we should stop responding to more edicts from government, more demands for box ticking, and do something positive that could possibly prove that advertising with positive messaging could be a force for good. How to achieve this? Ask business, my members of the AA, who were almost all the players in the ad industry, advertisers and the media to join together and fund a major long-term campaign to improve the nation's health. In short, I put together a group who became known as Business for Life. Advertisers, principally food companies, but also sports and fitness companies, ad agencies and the media companies. Broadcasters, but also online, the press, radio, with ITV really helping me to break through some of the more challenging gateways, uh, Whitehall in other words, to get this off the ground. We pledged £200 million over three years of communications to tackle obesity. We wanted government's blessing simply because we needed to know that they would give us a chance to succeed, to make a difference before introducing more inflexible, costly and fairly useless regulation. By the way, I'm a lawyer, so I think I can say with hand on heart that some regulation is, of course, absolutely necessary. But much of it is too slow, too inflexible, and feeds lawyers rather than the public good. We approached the then Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, with our plan. We called it Get Britain Fit for 2012. Our plan was to engage, indeed embrace the nation in a goal to try and, with small steps, help and encourage the nation to rethink its diet, diet rethink its, its behavioural uh, or, or introduce behavioural change with this brilliant goal, a fitter nation for the Olympics. So far, so good. Uh, both DCMS, then it was James Purnell, and Number 10 were extremely supportive, but they wanted us to bring uh, with us uh, the Department of Health, which of course seemed at the sur on the surface entirely sensible. Well, how naive was I? First of all, DH were appalled at the idea of doing something with DCMS. And secondly, 
they said absolutely no to anything called Get Britain Fit for 2012. Why? Because that meant sport, and sport is elitist. Finally, uh, or frankly, in the weeks that followed, it would have been easier to lose the will to live. But we refused, as we were so determined to make this work and prove that bans and restrictions are not the answer. Our mantra became, it's persuasion rather than compulsion that works. That positive solutions are far more powerful, and surely it is possible for departments to actually work together to make a difference. Indeed, we also brought in the Department of Transport because this campaign would have a lot to do with getting Britain on the move. Um, months of agonising negotiations passed and Change for Life was launched. It has been successful in terms of recognition, a lot of reach and some good outcomes in, in terms of uh, tackling obesity levels. But it was, in my view, a massive mistake for DH to make it so obviously a government campaign. I wanted a movement without labels like Make Poverty History. No finger pointing, no nannying, and no massive DH expense on consultants, etc. And a comms director, who I gather even flew to the White House, presumably on either the US or UK taxpayers' expense, to take the credit. The key to all this was calories in, calories out. Educate the public about what they and their children are eating and what they can do to change. Lifestyle. It's what you eat. You must be active. We offered so many small tips that could make the difference and make it fun to get fit. A no-brainer, but in practice, this was uphill and treacle. In truth, DH were terrified of involving food companies and soft drink companies. Uh, they didn't trust them to do the right thing. But one of the key aims was to encourage them to rethink food formulation, food portions, etc. I should add at this point that we were not able to get the drinks companies on board, I mean alcohol drinks companies on board, but they did then ask me and others on our team to help them develop their thinking through drink aware, etc. how to tackle growing levels of alcohol harm. More recently, I was involved in a public health commission initiated by Andrew Lansley as Shadow Health Secretary as an independent commission to make recommendations to Her Majesty, then Her Majesty's opposition on how to improve the health of the nation, the role of diet, physical activity and responsible drink uh, drinking. This was chaired by the then chairman of Unilever UK and comprised representatives from both food and alcohol sector and it was amazing. We also had medical clinicians and researchers, and we had an amazing disparate group of companies, organisations around that table. Heart UK, Tesco, Witch, Diabetes UK, Wine and Spirit Association, of course me from the Advertising Association. And we came up with this document, which was called We Are All In This Together. And whilst we represented an amazing uh, disparate group and the first meeting, everyone was sort of looking at each other around the table as if, God, I have never shared a table with this organisation in my life. Um, we must have opposing views and this isn't going to work. I have to tell you that within weeks and a few months, this group of people built so much consensus because we quickly worked out we've all got a similar goal, a same goal, improving the public health, improving health of the nation. And we were all becoming more and more, I feel, and I'm proud to say, practical in our approach. And we built trust in each other in a way that I just, you know, I, I just wish we could have done uh, through my experience of Change for Life uh, with, with Whitehall. And, and with business too. I mean, obviously there were a lot of people in business who were not used to sharing a table with each other either, unless it was to compete and confront. But this was about actually saying, well, let's all stop doing this, let's drop our brands and let's start thinking about how we can work, work together. So in a sense, I was really pleased with the chance to be involved with this Public Health Commission because we were able to create a much more holistic approach to tackle uh, key challenges regarding our consumption. And we split it very quickly, I'll just explain, we split it into different areas, food and alcohol, education, we decided immediately almost education should be at the forefront of our recommendations. Also, that as with change for life, health means that we eat and ha uh, what we eat and how active we are. So obvious, but believe me, it, uh, it's, it's hard work to, to encourage others. Improve what we eat and drink, eat and drink appropriate quantities and increase activity, maximize prevention while maintaining care, focus on the positive, always focusing on the positive, evaluate for continuous improvement, I learned, I learned so much through this commission uh, from what I call the, uh, the clinical experts and so on, just how poor we are at evaluating what we're doing. But of course, uh, companies like ad agencies do this all the time. So they were able to lend pro bono their expertise 
to help us to really get much better and to help the clinicians and others to really get much better at evaluating what it is that we're trying to achieve. Build genuine partnership. This was a tough one. And of course, it's all part of a responsibility deal. So it's the steps that you take towards this, and it's the building relationships and engaging with others who you may not have thought um, you could work with that can make the difference. But the section I want to deal with just for a couple of minutes, because I know we, we've got more to talk, um, is about building genuine par partnership. The opening lines of this chapter in this document um, on this, um, um, as a result of this uh, commission, um, the opening lines actually say it rather politely. Um, and remember, I'm going back a couple of years. There is growing concern that government may be better at talking about partnership than it is in nurturing it and delivering it through. So in other words, you know, it's so easy to talk. It's so easy to tick boxes. It's so easy to park documents in various dusty corners. But actually, nudging in action is what it's all about. In many ways, I wish that we had politely ignored DH at that time and just worked with DCMS because they really, DCMS really got it. But DH magically came up with 75 million pounds and consultants in charge of managing us, consultants brought in from the private sector and the overall campaign. We wanted it to work and it has to some degree, but the unnecessary waste of time uh, trying to get through sort of this lack of trust, the unnecessary add-on costs to the taxpayer and waste of time trying to keep everyone on board was ridiculous. The first soft launch we had, I wasn't even invited, so I had to invite myself, and nor were the other government departments. At the second main launch, I wasn't allowed to speak. If it wasn't for one individual at number 10 called Geoffrey Norris, who I think on the back of this actually retired, he got so completely worn out, um, the whole thing would have collapsed. And you may say, and so what, what, what does it matter? But remember, we had two million, 200 million pounds and a whole lot of really, really good uh, positive uh, input from business, really, really genuinely wanting to do the right thing. And this included the best communicators in the land, pro bono, on board, all wanting, genuinely wanting to tackle this really tough issue. Partnership where all the players are involved can be extraordinarily powerful. So m government mustn't dictate. Government is there to enable, full stop. The final point, which is about responsibility deals, gives me an opportunity to say what I now think a couple of years on. And with no axe to grind, I'm not involved in, in this at all now. Uh, what, we're trying to, what we were trying to achieve uh, what will not work unless we get tougher. Not bans and restrictions, but actually allowing clinicians and communicators the freedom to say what needs to be said. In other words, we have to tackle head on the need for individuals to take responsibility for their health to tackle what I call the negative culture of entitlement, which does not solve the problem. To simply blame the NHS, to blame government as a whole or others about how one is as an individual, or indeed the food companies, will get us nowhere. I'm a proud of what we achieved with Change for Life. I call it nudging in action, but there is so much more to do. Thank you for listening.